Hello, Dr. Stevens here with a little video on continuous, discrete, categorical, and numeric data. Data is nothing more than a collection of individual pieces of information, and we categorize it in various different ways. In fact, speaking of categories, let's get started by talking about categorical data. Really, categorical data is pretty much what you would think it is, at least to a certain extent. Any information that is not numeric is going to be categorical data. So, for example, the country that you were born in would be categorical data. For each person, it's going to be the name of a country. It's simply a category. But it's not quite as simple as you might think, because sometimes data that's numeric, or numeric in appearance, is still considered to be categorical. That's the case when the observations do not correspond to measured values for which addition and subtraction makes sense. For example, the jersey numbers on football players are definitely numeric in the sense of being numbers, but we consider them categorical data. It wouldn't make sense to add or subtract or anything else with these numbers, or to assume that player number 16 is bigger than player number 7. So categorical data is a pretty simple idea. The next one, the other kind, Numeric data. It seems that numeric data could be anything that you describe as a number. And in fact, that is one way that some people define numeric data. But most statisticians want to be able to classify all information as either numeric or categorical, but not both. And for that reason, they reserve the term numeric for measured or counted quantities, ones where at least addition and subtraction make sense. So, for example, if we ask people their lucky numbers, we're not going to consider that to be numeric data. The results that we get, while definitely numbers, aren't measured and aren't capable of having any arithmetic done on them. On the other hand, if we ask people how many pairs of shoes do you own, the responses will definitely be numeric data. Let's see if you got this idea. Here is a picture of a piece of the body. If I ask what piece of the body it is, the data that comes back will be categorical or numeric? Obviously, categorical. If I ask eye color, it would also be categorical. On the other hand, if I asked you how many millimeters across the eye was, that's a numeric value. It's a measured or counted quantity. In this case, it's measured. Pretty simple, huh? That's basically all we can really say about categorical numeric variables, but there's a second way to categorize things as well. Let's talk about that. The second way to evaluate data is in terms of being discrete or continuous. I'm going to start out by talking about discrete data. If you look up the word discrete in the dictionary, you'll find something like individually separate and distinct. And that's really the sense that we want to be thinking about discrete when we're talking about statistics as well. For starters, anything which is categorical data is always going to be discrete. Categorical data could be the names of categories, or it could be numbers, but not representing anything which is measured or counted. And such data will always be individual observations, discrete. But numerical data can be discrete as well. In particular, if you take numerical data and stick it along a number line, discrete data will always appear as a number of individual isolated dots. This is going to be true for any finite data set. If, for example, I asked 40 people to tell me uh, how many pages they had read over the last two days, then I would get individual dots, one for each person, and the data is discrete. The most common kind of a discrete variable to get is one that allows any counting number, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. We sometimes call these counting variables. I've kind of suggested them on the number line here. But the key idea when looking at a number line is that if you have discrete data, it's going to form separate dots. The opposite kind of data is what's called continuous. The other important category of variable type or data type is continuous variables. Continuous variables are always numeric data. And again, if we plot the possible values of such variables on a number line, we're going to end up with a section of the number line from a lower limit to an upper limit. Generally speaking, with a continuous variable, if two different values are possible, then a value in between those two is also another possible value. Maybe this picture represents how long it takes you to complete a task, and it suggests you could get it done in one and a half minutes or up to two and a half minutes, but if those two plot times are possible, one's in between are as well, so just two minutes. But indeed, 2.1713456 minutes is also possible. It's a continuum, a continuity of possible values. In fact, a continuous variable can occupy the entire number line with all whole numbers, or I'm sorry, all real numbers being allowed. 
You can get a hybrid of continuous and discrete values, for example, a line segment with some extra dots outside that segment, and we don't really call that continuous or discrete, but fortunately this hardly ever comes up in real life, so we're not going to worry about it. On the previous slide, I chose to talk about continuous variables rather than continuous data. It might be worthwhile to distinguish a little bit between what we mean by the two. As we said, data consists of the individual pieces of information that we've managed to gather. So, for example, I may have a data set consisting of the heights of all the students at our university. When I talk about a variable, I'm instead talking about any quantity which can be measured or counted. So I could say, for example, that X is the number of minutes that are required for someone to complete an examination. Every time that I pick a new individual, I'm going to get a new measured time. The variable itself would be that quantity which I'm going to measure. If I do collect the information for a group of students, X would be a continuous variable, but the specific values of X that I collect would be data. The reason I'm making this distinction has to do with the idea of continuous versus discrete. Any real-life numeric data will consist of only a finite number of observations, it won't be infinite, and will be measured and recorded to only a finite number of decimal places. And this means that the measurements themselves will always constitute a discrete set of data. However, when we ask if a variable is continuous, we're not talking about the measurements that we may have made of that variable. We're talking about the quantity itself. So, for example, the number of minutes that you take to complete a test is a continuous variable, even if I only record that time to the nearest minute. Make sense? All right, let's see what you can do with these ideas. Let's see if you've got this down. I'm going to invite a creature onto our screen here and ask you what kind it is. Ah, here it comes. Now, what is that? If you answer something like, it's a grasshopper, well, very good. That answer, is that discrete or continuous? Is it categorical or numeric? Well, hopefully you came up with the conclusion that it's categorical data. It's just the name of a kind of insect. And therefore, my first question, is it discrete or continuous, is really a red herring. We don't really talk about discrete or continuous unless we're talking about numeric data. So it's simply categorical. How about if I asked how many times this little fellow has jumped over the course of his lifetime? The number of hops. Categorical or numeric? Discrete or continuous? I'm hoping that you said it's numeric, but it's discrete. It's something that we can count. Numeric variables are things that we can count or measure, so that makes good sense. It's also discrete because the number of hops this fellow has made in his life so far has to be a counting number, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So it's numeric and discrete. Sorry, bug, but here's our new next topic, the length of a foot. Is it categorical or numeric? Is it discrete or continuous? Well, it's a measured quantity, so it's pretty obviously numeric. It's also pretty obviously continuous, because a foot could be of any variety of lengths that form a segment of the number line. I could have an 8-inch foot, for example, or a foot that's 8.16124 inches long. Any possible value over a given range is always possible, making it a continuous variable. Let's add one more thing. We'll put a shoe on the foot and talk about shoe size. Once again, categorical or numeric and discrete or continuous. It's definitely numeric. We can talk about differences in shoe size. In fact, for example, a size 8 shoe differs from a nine, size 9 shoe's length, the same amount that a size 9 differs from a size 10. That means that subtraction is making sense here. But it's actually a discrete quantity. You can't buy a shoe that's, let's say, size 8.41467. They come in 8 eight and a half, nine, and so on. But in between eight and eight and a half, we don't have a standard shoe size. And because of that, the size of a shoe is a discrete variable. So would the value of a coin be? We have a coin that's worth one penny, a coin that's worth five pennies, no coins that are worth anything in between. The value of coins would also be discrete. Okay, well, hopefully you've gotten the idea of discrete and continuous and numeric and categorical. Let's finish this up with one last example. Are you ready for this video to end? If the answer is yes, choose one. If the answer is no, choose two. And for, I'm sorry, what was the question?
choose three. I'll be honest, what I'm really interested in is the answer that you just gave in terms of its measurement. Is it categorical or numeric? Is it continuous or discrete? The answer is that this is decidedly categorical data, which means the question of discrete or continuous doesn't even come up. Make sure that you understand why categorical data is the right answer. And I'll see you later.